Warning try hurt at your own risk. Hello, I am Bumper Crib 97 also known as G. Before I start the guide there are some important notes to think about. This game can be played however you want. Meaning my guide is not meant to be taken as how you should be playing the game. Second when it comes to a full lobby of 5000 hour experienced players on a vanilla server. Meaning no mods in the server. Good luck surviving as it's pure chance to even survive, because of how much you have to adapt to each player's playstyle metagame and that's just too much to go through in one video. Third, depending on your server and what mods there are in it, the amount of skill changes on what you can do in a server. Okay let's go. When the game starts, it's safe to assume that all SCPS are trying to sweep the entire light containment zone. So priority is to leave that zone with a card to better your odds of surviving. First, you spawn in as a D-class, and the best choices you can make are to find keycards, or follow someone who has one. When you hear the checkpoint door open, it can be three things. An SCP opens it. Second, the facility guard opened it. Or third, a D-class or scientist is exiting. Two out of three times you hear checkpoint door open. As a D-class you should run away, while as a scientist to take the risk and go through checkpoint. You can also be hiding somewhere close around hallway corners while an SCP enters. You go through the checkpoint sneakily before checkpoint door closes, while the SCP doesn't notice you, and go into elevators. Even if the SCP notices you can close the elevator on them they wouldn't go and chase you. It's also important to know that SCPs make a lot of noise when they're navigating through the zone. Knowing each sound helps avoid being confronted by them. For example hearing SCP-173 neck break and snapping noises means you should avoid being in sight of them or avoid being in their general direction, even if they're blocking the path you're trying to take, such as checkpoint or 914 area. Dog footsteps also known as 939 footsteps, means to crouch and go to areas dog doesn't check until it is safe to start running. Hearing 096 cries or rage means to look at the floor you can walk and pass by with no harm. Just remember you're not his target unless you saw his face. And it made the jump scare noise. SCP-106 is probably the most easiest to avoid. So long as he's not persistent with the chase. But avoiding facing him is the easiest part. His footsteps are loud, so make sure his footsteps are not too close to you. Same with 049. So in heavy containment, finding the entrance zone is as easy as staying to one side right or left. If you find yourself stuck, because an SCP or threat is camping checkpoint, then head to the other checkpoint by going left or right to find the second checkpoint. Once in entrance zone, and if a spawn wave happens, and they're not on your team, you have the option to hide in a dead end, since no one checks those, to make the opportunity to escape, or go mayhem. Explode the elevator or camp gate B until the wave is clear. As a scientist and there's chaos, there's a chance to go to gate B without being harmed. If you're stuck with no card that can open checkpoint, there may be dead bodies of guards, which can provide you with facility card, guns, and ammo. You should also hang on to any scientist card, so that you can open 096 and 106 room for MTF cards, which are really powerful in the beginning of the game. They allow you to open gate of and B, access better weapons and grenades. As facility guard the best play is getting grenades, and the MTF card before anyone else. Getting the grenades, allows you to open the micro HID, by exploding the door. The MTF card is accessible by using scientist cards found in lockers at entrance zone, inside server room, and in 939 chamber room lockers. Using your scientist card head to 106, or 096 room to get the MTF card, using the micro is very challenging, and can require a lot of practice to get it right. But an easy trick is to lure them in an elevator and blast them when they come down for you. Or charge in with a bunch of MTFS or guards to cover for you. Facility guards are heavily underrated as they can take down 049 or 106 by staying in groups. If it's 096, 173, or 939, there's just no chance unless they're bad SCP players. Facility guards might not seem much of a game changer. 
but it can determine which spawn wave is next, the MTF or Chaos. Stay out of the light zone in the first 5 minutes of the game as a facility guard, because you will die by the SCPS. Also while grabbing grenades by the nuke room, always turn the nuke on. This helps put pressure on the SCPS to stop camping elevators of MTF and Chaos. The best way to get an SCP off your back is by closing doors, and then get on the side of the door, and wait for the SCP to pass by. If it's 173 or 096, then look up and face the wall. This makes sure the game doesn't bug out and misinterpret your line of sight. By thinking you're looking at 173 or 096, this works better. If the SCP is at a distance to think that you're going through multiple doors, you can also try to find elevators like the nuke room, 049, or light zone elevators to close on anyone chasing you. If they're still going pursuing you by camping the elevator, you can try your best to juke them and close the elevators on them again, which can be quite tricky, depending who is the SCP. Some SCPs are smart enough to close the elevator to ensure you stay in the room with them. Grenades and flashbangs can help them to struggle and prevent them from doing that. Useful tip. When the elevator door turns orange wait 3 seconds and then throw flashbang or grenade. It will explode right when the elevator opens. The hat is also good for escaping from 173, 106, and 049. By going to the opposite direction from there we're chasing you. Colas are arguably the best item in the game as they make you able to easily outrun most SCPs, even 173 if you're careful. Drinking two colas and you become almost untouchable. To get that many colas, set flashbangs into very fine. Flashlights help you get flashbangs too, so don't throw away flashlights if you're near 19. When it comes to combat in this game you can strafe in without punishment, as there is no lag in movements, you do this by quickly moving left and right. Jumping is kind of unnecessary, it decreases your aim accuracy, so only jump, if you're trying to dodge bullets while reloading, or just taking the risk. This makes it hard for enemies to hit their shots correctly. For weapon attachments go for either long distance or hip fire accuracy. It's crazy how good the hip fire is for long distance, especially with LMGS for most gunfights. Hip fire is the way to go. Nothing wrong with ADS, as it's good for assassinating, but most of your encounters are going to require you to be moving fast and shoot first to win most gunfights. Useful tip the best way to counter any spawn wave is using their weapons against them by masking your shots that make people think ally fire is happening. For example, an AK is a very loud gun, so when MTF hears an AK, they would assume enemy chaos is there. Shooting an Epsilon gun or the Vector gun brings less attention towards you than it would with any other gun. You can also use the AK or LMG against the chaos, as it would mask your fire as an allied team for most people. You could be at surface firing down at chaos with an AK, and most wouldn't consider looking to your area, as it sounds like ally fire. The most silent killer would be the Epsilon AR weapon which using a silencer and snipe scope or just a regular scope attachments makes the gun almost silent and is good for ambushing chaos. Make sure to upgrade your medkits into stims and pills because pills do instant healing, giving you an edge when doing combats. Despite all of this what really is the goal for you in the game? If you could do everything in this game perfectly, how would it look like? For me it's to make the losing side of a team win to make an even match as possible or I just try to get as many kills as I can. Dude, how did you guys fumble that? <laughs>